Okay, can I have a show of hands? How many of you got problems completing the assignment? Is it very difficult? But for easy questions, right? There's a mixture of easy and difficult questions. Okay. Okay, what where are your yeah, the summary first. Pull out your summary on the table, please. Separation techniques will be something that will be useful for you. Okay, uh, if you were to do it properly, okay, basically you summarize the topic into this. Conceptually, I won't say all the content is over here, but feel free to add in the details that you need so that you don't have to study like many, many pages just for separation techniques. Okay? Now let's go through the answers very quickly. I want to hear thorough responses from you. Alright, now let's look at the first example here: sand and sodium chloride. What type of mixture is it? Solid. Solid. Solid, correct? Solid. But it's special because uh, one type of solid is insoluble while the other type is soluble. soluble. So what separation techniques will you need? Filtration. First of all, you will need filtration. Okay, because what will you do before that? Actually, what you will do before that is to dissolve, dissolve correct? Dissolve the soluble solid. In water. Okay? To carry out filtration. Then after filtration, you will have the residue and the filtrate. Am I right? Mm. Now what do you do to the filtrate after that? You create you, you you need to remove the solvent, am I right? Okay, you use, which is the water here. So you can either use evaporation to dryness. Or you can use what? Which one is the safer method? Other than evaporation and dryness will be? Crystallization. Crystallization. Okay. okay. Now, let's move on to the next type of mixtures. Sand and water. Sand and water is a type of what kind of mixture? And what is so special about this solid? Good, insoluble. Okay, very simple, straightforward method to separate. Insoluble solid with a liquid, you will use filtration. Okay, loud and clear. Huh? Next, sodium chloride and water. This is a solid liquid. What kind of solid is it? Soluble solid. Ah, this one how? Straightforward, right? There are only two kinds of methods, correct? The first being evaporation to dryness. The second being now, can you tell me how to select the methods? Evaporation to dryness mostly for thermally stable substances. Okay, thermally stable substances, whereas crystallization more for thermally unstable. unstable. Okay, what does thermally unstable mean? Decomposes under strong heating. Okay, so if we were to evap into dryness, there will be very high heat involved, okay, causing the substance to decompose. Alright? Now, next will be sugar and water. What's the type of mixture over here we're talking about? Solid liquid okay soluble also huh? sugar but what's so special about sugar immediately thermally you know unstable. sugar is thermally unstable therefore how many methods do we have to separate a little stable oops sorry unstable 
Okay, there's only one method, correct? And that must be crystallization. crystallization. Okay, I'm not going to revise the procedures for crystallization, but you need to know. Alright? Now, next will be ethanol and water. Two words will describe this mixture. They are? Liquid and liquid, yes, but especially what? Invisible. Okay, miscible liquids. Alright? Now, what about the separation technique that we are going to adopt? Fractional distillation. Fractional distillation. Hello. Can we use simple distillation? Can we use simple distillation? Why cannot? What's the body part of ethanol? Yeah, we all know it's 78. What, what, what's boiling of water? 100. 100. Quite significantly different. So actually, since there are only two components, I can use simple distillation. Okay, even though it will be preferred to use fractional, la, but simple distillation will work as well. Okay? Usually, for three or more components, straight away we go to fractional distillation. Okay? Now, separation for oil and water. What type of mixture is it? Liquid, liquid. Liquid, liquid. liquid, liquid. And they are? Immiscible. Okay, immiscible liquids. Separation technique to use, very straightforward. Is that from Shuan? Yes. I'm going to ignore that. Okay, separating funnel. Alright, we have already shown you how you have to turn the tap, drain the first part, and then after that, drain the second part again. Okay? Now, last but not least on this side, inconsisting of many water soluble dyes. Type of mixture? Okay, whenever you see dyes, colouring, their original form is mostly all right, solids. Okay, so this is actually a mixture of different soluble solids okay it's a mixture of different soluble solids now there's only one very very clear separation technique for this inks la dyes la food coloring la chromatography good and of course you check for the Okay, just an additional info, RF actually stands for retention factor. Okay, retention factor. Now, if it has a high retention factor, it means that it's capable of moving higher in the chromatogram. That means it's more soluble. If it has a lower retention factor, it just means that it's less soluble in the same uh, solvent. Okay, so the principle behind chromatography is the difference in solubility inside the same solvent. Clear? Okay. Now let's take a look at purity. Okay, what happens after separation? How do you know that after separation your substances are now pure? So we need to know what defines purity in a particular substance. And you know that there's one very important property. You check the what and what. Okay, so that will be the melting and boiling point. Okay, so if it's correct, just leave it. Pure substances have a fixed. Yes, let's use the word fixed. Okay, not common, universal, standard, That's constant. It. No, okay, fixed is the word I want to see. All right, fixed melting. Fixed means a single point, one point on the line, okay, one temperature. All right, so over here clearly the word is impure. Okay, impure substances melt or boil over a range of temperatures. And how does that work? How do impurities affect the melting and boiling points? Okay. okay, so the melting point becomes lower, whereas the boiling point becomes higher. And it becomes a range, correct? So previously we used water as an example. I say if water melts at zero and falls at 100, yes? Okay, so the moment you add some salt into it, it becomes an impurity. So it actually lowers the melting point to become a range that is below zero. 
and increases the boiling point to a range that is above 100. Agreed? Okay? So, can we understand any questions regarding this summary here? No. If not, then you can put this away. Let's go on with this worksheet. Yeah. Interaction between the two phases, the solution phase and the solid phase. Yeah, so forget it. Yeah. I'm not gonna try to explain it. Okay, okay like this question should be very simple, huh? Anybody got problem with this question? Can we just go down the row? One more, one more, one more, You should be happy if this comes out, huh, For your exam, holding a sample of calcium carbonate lumps for weighing. The so, happy words are given to you, right? So what's the answer? Weighing boat. Have you seen a weighing boat before? No. It's usually a square, okay, like a bowl like that, but it's a square shaped bowl. It's usually a, made of plastic, if not, then it's made of uh, paper, okay? It's really, what, it's like a bowl, you put it on top of the weighing band, the, the, the electronic balance, and after that, you weigh your solid in it. Okay, it's stable uh, because the base is flat, right? Measuring 25.00 CMP or hydrochloric acid accurately? 25.00. Twenty-five point zero zero. Pipette can give you twenty-five point zero zero or not? Zero. Twenty-five. What is the accuracy of a pipette? How many decimal places? One. Only one. Okay, so you fell for it. Pipette can only give you up to one decimal place. Twenty-five point zero, and it's fixed volume. Twenty-five, twenty, fifteen. These are the common volumes that we are using. Okay, so 25.00 part B is actually a burette. Only a burette can give you this accuracy. Not done at all. Why? Did you check your Google Classroom at all? Huh? No, but this was this one was given to you last week. I said it in class. And then you went to the worksheet. I mean. Do you found your stuff? Have you seen this worksheet before? My goodness. Why? Huh? Why? What check through? Where's yours? You don't have it. Then you didn't bother to text me and ask. Oh, are you okay? Sure. But I don't have it with me now. So why do you check on the book? Why do you check on the book? 
Now, in the in chemistry, right, you seldom find instruments that give you two decimal places. If you are measuring volume of liquid, okay, almost 100% of the time, two, de two decimal places means burette. Okay? Now, determine the purity of a liquid. You want to measure what? Temperature. Temperature. Therefore, you need a thermometer. Anybody can recall what is the minimum temperature that can be measured by a lab thermometer now? Negative. Modern day. Negative. Negative how much? Negative 10. And Negative 10. Hey, what's the maximum temperature? 110. 110. 110 degrees. Okay? Alcohol thermometers are in the lab. Alright, of course, um, I mean, right, research labs don't use alcohol thermometers anymore. We usually use digital ones with a probe. It's because we need the accuracy of the temperature. But in common laboratories, like secondary school, uh, JC, we use a normal laboratory analog, to, uh, sorry, alcohol thermometer. Okay? Are now. No. It's literally like a, like a stopwatch like that, and then there's a long, long probe, a metal probe. Okay? Monitoring the rise in temperature of a reaction at one minute intervals. You know, so simple. What are the apparatus you need? Thermometer and stopwatch. Okay? So that's a giveaway. Let's move. Now. This question over here, an experiment was set up to separate a mixture of methyl benzene and potassium chloride solution. Methyl benzene is less dense than water. Now these are the two keys over here. Methyl benzene is an organic compound. Now we haven't learned anything about organic chemistry yet. Okay, but um, yeah, the key piece of information is that methyl benzene is less dense than water, yes or no? Okay, so what does this tell you? What does the diagram tell you? Methyl benzene and water are immiscible. Are okay, so for starters, you might want to start annotating with this kind of words. Okay, now methyl benzene, right, is one of my favorite compounds because it smells very nice. It smells like petrol. We have talked about this before, right? The whole petrol thing. Yeah, it's, methyl benzene is a very important compound in the Production of what we call trinitrous toluene, TNT. Have you ever heard of TNT before? Yes. The explosive? Yes. Yeah. TNT is a real thing, huh? Yes. So in the army, right, where we throw like grenades, and the grenade is a blind, that means you throw a grenade, grenade, you throw out, then you're supposed to hit the ground, bah, explode, right? Yeah. Then you kill the enemy, right? Okay, with a 20 meter drilling radius for the Singapore grenade model, all right? But then you go for training, you throw the grenade, 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 grenade but then, then it stops that it doesn't blow up. So what happens to that? You cannot go near that thing because you don't know when you will detonate. So what happens is SPF will send in the, the explosive the detonators, then they will plant the TNT there and they come out, then they just, just blow it up inside. Okay? So TNT it comes from methyl benzene. You may not know how methyl benzene looks like. I can draw for you lah, huh? Methyl benzene looks like this. It's a very cute molecule. Okay, each of these corners is a carbon atom bonded to a hydrogen atom. Okay, so you will you will learn these kind of things when you go to JC. Benzene chemistry is not in the O-level syllabus, too cheap already. Okay? Now anyway, your question is very simple. You're supposed to label X, A, and B. So what is X? Separating funnel. Separating funnel. Then A will therefore be A will therefore be 
A will therefore be methyl benzene. Okay, methyl benzene because it is less dense than water. So B is definitely water. Right, so if it's a correct answer, please put a tick. Don't just uh, stare into space. Now, I thought, I thought it was separating. Okay, never mind. What? Come again. I thought it was separating potassium chloride. Ah, sorry. It's potassium chloride and methyl benzene. So, layer B is potassium chloride solution. Ah. Okay, now I say water because the base is uh, water. Lah, huh? KCl equals. Right, that's how I will write potassium chloride by the middle of the year after we have learned how to write chemical formulae. Okay, I will expect you to be able to speak in this language. Huh? Okay, after I've taught you that and after I've drill you upside down on this new language that you're going to learn. Big K, big C, small L. Okay? Potassium chloride. Clear? Alright. Metal benzene. Okay. Part two, can you please start part two for yourself? This is what we call um, a justification question. Pretty high order, but this is a simple one. Uh, very hot favorite among uh, Cambridge because these days they like to give you a certain context. Then they ask you, oh, can you make a decision about this? Oh, so I don't think this really is correct or wrong. All right? Okay, now, so a student wanted to separate a mixture containing propanol dissolved in water. He stated that since propanol is less dense than water, the above setup can be used to separate a mixture of propanol and water. Is the student correct? No. no. No, because it's dissolved in the water. Yeah, no, because it is dissolved in the water. That means propanol and water are miscible liquids. Can the separating funnel be used to separate miscible liquids? Okay, how do you know that it is miscible? Data is given in the question. Propanol is dissolved in the water. Even if it is not given, by the end of your sex 4 chemistry, you should be able to tell me that propanol is miscible in water because many types of alcohols are soluble in water. How do I know that it is an alcohol? Propanol, look at the name at the back, it is a type of compound. It is a compound from the family called alcohols. Okay, from the family called alcohols. So, the alcohol that Shan drinks every night. <laughs> it's called ethanol. Ethanol is a type of alcohol. Alcohol is a family of compounds. Okay, what we call homologous series, which you'll learn in sex for all. Alright, now, uh, what are other types of alcohols? Butanol, cholesterol. Okay. Yeah, these are all different types of alcohol. Okay? Now, alcohol is a family of substances. Alright? So your answer over here. Hey, falling asleep. Okay, now you. You want to stand up? Then you should hold a pen. And pretend to be writing. Okay, now, such a question. What are the potential pitfalls? Yes. What are the potential pitfalls that you might encounter? Okay, let me spend a bit of time on this. Huh? We don't want to only learn the content, we want to learn the answering technique. Okay. What is a common problem with students over here is that, let me write it on the board. Question is asking you, can method A be used to separate Mixture X. Okay? Now the correct answer, okay, the correct answer will be to tell me no. Because mixture X is a mixture of miscible liquids. Correct? 
ethanol and water, I'm sorry, propanol and water are miscible liquids. And therefore, I cannot use a separating funnel to, to, to separate it. Now, what is one common type of answer that people will write? Is that you don't talk about mixture X. You don't talk about mixture X. You talk about method A. You say, no, it can only be used to separate immiscible liquids. Now, what's the difference between these two answers? This, the context is given to you. Can I, I, I ask you, can method A be used to separate mixture X? Okay? You tell me, no, because mixture X for this problem, this problem is that it is miscible. So I will give you the mark. Why will I not give you the mark here? It can only be used to separate immiscible liquids. Are you answering the question about mixture X? Over here. You're not. So please, very frequently, without consideration, you will focus on method A. But actually, method A has been discussed prior to this. Now I'm giving you a new context to talk about mixture X. Can it be separated? Okay, can it be separated? Now, so you must make reference to the properties of mixture X and tell me why mixture X is not suitable for separation using this method. Now, this is a simple question. I can use the same question type and ask you the same question type and ask you other contexts. Okay, which is not so straightforward. Today, today we are only a, this is only a single layer thinking. The only knowledge is what is the use of method A, which is separating funnel. Do you understand? I can ask you something with a lot more complexity. When you have enough knowledge, okay, I need you to go back to the fundamentals and answer always to the question instead of going away or like answering negatively. You understand? Okay, you ask, uh, let me see whether I can raise a layman example. Um, okay, like you ask the, the gym manager, can I eat my lunch in the gym? Then the gym manager tells you, you can run on the treadmill. Is he answering your question? No. But he's implying that you cannot eat in the gym, am I right? Ah, what do you want to imply? I don't want you to imply. This question has an implication. You are implying that it can only be used to separate immiscible liquids and therefore, since these two are miscible liquids, you cannot separate them. Can you go straight to the point? You just tell me, no, you cannot eat in the gym. Instead of, you, you can run on the track. Alright? So, they don't really work like this, okay? Your question and your answering techniques must be there. Are we clear? Okay, simple question. We don't want to just learn the content. We want to also learn the technique, all right? Next, now, an experiment was set up, okay, to separate a solution containing ethanol, water, and a blue dye. There are three components over there. Ethanol, water, blue dye, okay? Mixture over here. Boiling chips, whatever, immediately you can see this is a setup for simple distillation. Okay, now, a few things. Are you able to label the entire setup? No. Without reference? Yes. What do I call this thing uh, in general? Uh, the liquid that comes out? Distillate. Distillate. Okay, the distillate. Alright, the distillate. Okay, then the rest should be very, very standard. Now, draw arrows on the diagram to show where the water enters and leaves the condenser. Okay, water, water in, water out. Remember to label as mentioned in the question. Alright? Explain the direction of the water flowing in the condenser. This is something you have learned in lower sec before. Okay, I want to hear from you what are the key points that we need to discuss when we are talking about the precaution of using a condenser. Anybody got any key points to throw out? Why must water go in from the bottom and come out from the top? Okay, so Sean has given us the first point. The first and foremost important thing is the feeling, okay? It's the feeling. So that the condenser, okay, I'm going to give you the points, huh? Condenser, or rather ensure that the condenser
is fully filled with water. And then ensure what? This helps to ensure that. This helps to ensure that. Yes, efficient and effective. Okay, two things: cooling and condensation. Of the vapor. Okay, so these two points over here, just commit it to memory. All right. Just commit it to memory. Even more effective, what will you modify? Convert it to a from simple to fractional. So how do you say that? Okay, good. At a it is a fractionating column, not fractioning column. Fractionating column to the Flask. Okay, add a fractionating column to a distillation flask. So basically what happens is that when you add in a fractionating column, it causes the vapor to rise over a longer distance. You, you allow for easier separation. Okay, because those that are not hot enough, they will just condense back downstairs. Right, go watch last week's HBL video or not? When I explain fractional distillation. Can I understand? 20 minutes, those haven't watched yet, go and watch. Okay, it's still on GC. Finish up your learning for chapter one. If you never do your HBL last week, I don't know what you're doing. Okay, I'm definitely not gonna read this. Huh? Alright, it is an instructional video. Okay, a liquid is heated as shown in the experimental setup. Alright. Um are we on to the next question already? Yeah, yeah. Okay, so there is a vent tube, there is a thermometer. There is an unknown solution, and then it's a conical flask, and then there's a Bunsen flame on. Now, okay, identify the pistol apparatus name P and Q. What is P? Q will be? Okay, usually we just call it a rubber stopper. Uh, it's not cork. We don't use cork stoppers anymore. Because cork stoppers are very dirty. Okay, they soak up liquids. So now we seldom use uh, cork stoppers. Because they are fibrous in nature. Rubber is easier to maintain. Okay, so rubber stopper, the common name in the lab, the lab has called rubber bumps. Okay, B U N G S. Sorry? Uh, oh, you mean for wine bottles? Uh? Yeah, they use cork because it is of a plant nature and I think they are very mindful of the taste of the of the wine. If you use other materials, it may alter the taste. Okay? What's the purpose of key in the setup? Key is to monitor. Is it? Is it to measure the body point? It performs a very simple function. It's the same in 
distillation to measure the temperature of the, of the not gas but vapor. Okay, now what is the purpose of the thermometer? I have the thermometer there to show it's an indicative instrument. It's not for me to measure the volume. Let's say I already know what are the substances inside. You have to know, right, in order to know how to separate it. So, it is to indicate to you, okay, once the distillation is happening, let's say you're distillating, distilling, sorry, ethanol from water, once it reaches 78 degrees and it will stop there for quite a while, that means the liquid that's coming out is actually ethanol. Okay, so it is an indicating instrument. It's like a screen telling you that eh, reach already. The temperature reach already. This is when your distillate is coming out. Okay, so the purpose of the thermometer is to measure the vapor's temperature. The vapor's temperature. Okay, very important. Okay. Now, <clears throat> so this is another novel context. Question number five. Okay. Now, a student wanted to measure the time taken for 20 grams of solid zinc carbonate to react with a solution of hydrochloric acid. Okay, so what is he measuring? I will highlight first, time taken for zinc carbonate to react with hydrochloric acid. Okay, so what he did was he mixed the zinc carbonate with the acid in a conical flask then he recorded the mass of the reaction mixture at one minute intervals. Wow, very cheap, this one. Okay, so this is the setup. Inside got the zinc carbonate. Okay, got the hydrochloric acid. Then you'll register a certain mass, correct? Can I ask you to recall? Will these two things react? Yes. yes. What will be formed? Uh, salt, water, carbon dioxide. Carbon dioxide. Water, water, salt, zinc, chloride, chloride, salt. Okay, so I will not expect you to be able to write this yet because you haven't learned it. But let me just expose it to you first. Okay, also because I'm very lazy to spell out everything here on the screen. So this is zinc chloride, salt, water, carbon dioxide. Correct. Now, question: Wu Chen, are you okay? Do you want to stand up? You are straight out. Fight the Z dragon. The dragon that keeps on beside your head. Okay, now, of all of this, can you tell me who will remain inside the flask? These three things. Water will remain inside the flask. Zinc chloride will remain inside the flask. What will happen to the carbon outside? It will escape, correct? Agreed? Okay, it will escape. So, what will happen to the mass here over time? Decrease. It will start to decrease. Can we understand this? I'm just teaching the sex force this very thing. Okay, because we are going to learn real reaction also this year. And we will see this setup appear again. Alright? So the mass loss is due to the carbon dioxide. Now, they said that oh, after some time, a constant mass was obtained. Why did the that means the mass stop dropping, correct? It drop, 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 drop. After some time, the mass remains constant. Finished. The reaction has finished. finished. It's completed already. Right? Stop already. Right? How, how else can you tell the reaction has stopped? No more effervescence. No more effervescence. Why would that be effervescence? It is effervescence of? The, 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 of which gas? Uh, of the colorless yeah. gas. And which gas is it? The CO2. Can we understand? Yeah. Okay, can we understand? Alright. So that's the concept here. Now, he recorded the mass. If y'all have the book, huh? You all should annotate together with me on the book. Okay, you shouldn't be just on your worksheet, otherwise you don't know what's happening, right? Okay, now, a constant mass was obtained after some time. Let's look at the questions. Now, the hydrochloric acid used in the above experiment was in excess. Was in excess. Okay, this is a difficult question. For First month learner in sectary chemistry. The hydrochloric acid used in the world experiment was in excess. What does this mean? There's much more than needed. Correct. So in between carbon dioxide, sorry, in between zinc carbonate and hydrochloric acid, 
which reactant will finish using first? Zinc. Zinc. Zinc carbonate or hydrochloric acid? Finish using zinc. Zinc carbonate, correct? Why? Because hydrochloric acid is used in is used in excess. Okay. So assuming, assuming. Okay, I'm, I'm assuming heterosexual norms. Okay. All other varying norms, I'm not here to discuss this with you. Assuming one boy is paired with one girl. Okay, no other relationships discussed, just pairing. Okay. Uh, and I have an excess of boys. Okay. <laughs> one boy is paired with one girl, listen to the condition. Now, at the end of the reaction, will there be any girls left? No. 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 The the, what does this mean? To ensure that all the C carbonate will completely react with the acid. That's the answer. Okay? To ensure that all the C carbonate will completely react with the acid. Is it measured twice? To ensure that C carbonate will completely react with the acid. To ensure that zinc carbonate will completely react with the acid. So this is how you ensure that at least one of the substances is used up in the reaction. I just put it, put the other one in large excess. Okay? Alright? Yes. Am I using sex air? Not sex three. Yes, of course. Yeah, every I don't, year I don't know when we will be, but of course they will be there. I don't know. I'm not in charge of it. <laughs> sure. <laughs> set 3, like, but set 2 is the most interesting. Yeah, yeah. Set 2 is the most interesting. Set 2 is the most interesting. Set, two is the most interesting. set 4 is the most boring. Distant, la, because set 4, you, they will touch on topics like marriage and all that. Yeah, also have some. Also have. Can we come back? To you? I'm not your bio teacher. Okay, hello ma. Part B done. Ah, part C. Name the apparatus that can also be can be used to measure out twenty point zero. How many decimal places, ladies and gentlemen? One. One. Oh, Therefore, apparatus you're going to use is? And the volume is a familiar one, correct? 20 yeah. cm cube. So you will use a pipette to measure. Okay. P I P E T T E. Okay, now explain with the aid of a diagram. How carbon dioxide gas produced in the reaction could be collected. These are the two methods that you can use to collect. Did you all draw? Are you all able to draw it? Use ruler, first requirement. Okay? It doesn't have to be very good proportions as long as it's not severely out of proportion. Now, what are other things that people will look for? They will look for this. Whether or not it is bent in a rounded corner. Okay, bent in a rounded corner. Okay, the delivery tube, we are not very strict with it. Where what? Bent in a rounded corner. Where is it? Okay. Wait, no, I thought. Oh, by the way, uh, for drawing, right? Can I ask you to use pencil, please? All the time. You should learn this in low set. Diagrams, pencil. Always. Okay? Do not trust yourself too much. And I will accept that you draw with reference to your textbook. The fact of the matter is drawing is uncommon now. Okay? In the examination. Okay? It is uncommon. 
because uh, I mean it's quite it's difficult like, it's a very demanding skill. I can't draw operators well. well. In my time, O level will test you to draw a lot. Okay, we have to draw like test tubes. Then my teachers will make me draw like 200 test tubes. Like literally with boxes that you draw inside the box. Okay, like penmanship like that, but for chemistry diagrams. Alright, so I'm not going to spend too much time on this because we have done it quite extensively. Let's move on to part E. Now, the student also investigated the reaction between 20 grams of solid zinc oxide and hydrochloric acid. The equation is shown below. So, zinc oxide is a type of base. Reactive acid this is actually a neutralization reaction. You form salt and water. Difficult question. Okay, difficult question. Remind that to yourself. Yes. Oh, did I miss it? The explanation. Uh, okay, so what's the explanation? Sorry, I missed out the explanation. You have the diagrams already. How carbon dioxide produced in the reaction could be collected. What are your considerations when deciding what method to use to collect the gas? The density. Uh, uh, the density. Soluble water. Whether or not it is soluble in water. These are the two key things. So as long as your explanation has carbon dioxide is denser than air, therefore you can use downward delivery. If not, then you tell me carbon dioxide is not very soluble in water. Therefore, you can use a displacement of water. Okay, upward displacement of water. Any questions? Uh, you don't need a beehive shelf. What is a beehive shelf? It's a beehive shelf. Basically, a shelf with hexagons on it. Okay, basically it's just to let the gas bubble through the hexagon and does get through it and become smaller bubbles so that you don't get spattering all over. Just like a frame, right? Yeah, but it's not you it's not necessary to have a beehive shelf. What you can do is you can use a tripod. I'm uh, sorry, a retort stand to clamp the gas shelf. Or you can even use an inverted measuring cylinder, it doesn't matter. Retort. Not a tripod. You all understand what's a tripod? Uh, what's a retort, right? Yeah. This is a tripod. This is a tripod. Yeah, but the tripod in the black is the three-legged triangle thing. Okay. Did you just swear? Oh, I didn't swear. You did. What the heck? I'm right here. Show one more time. Maybe chili in front of the whole school. I said. I know what you say. <laughs> Five minutes. Let's finish this and call it a day. Now, <clears throat> the student also investigated the reaction between 20 grams of solid zinc oxide and hydrochloric acid. The reaction given to you is shown below here. Those are the products, salt and water. Explain the difference between this reaction and the first reaction and why the student would not be able to use the same setup to find a decrease in mass of solid zinc oxide in this reaction. Just now we discussed for the previous case of zinc carbonate 1, why does the mass loss method work? Uh, because the carbon dioxide is a... Yes. Carbon, dioxide, carbon dioxide is a what of this reaction? Product. It's a product. 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 product of the reaction. And the carbon dioxide, what does it happen? What happens to it? I mean? It escapes. It escapes into the air. In the show of you, okay or not? Try to give that away. Then, in the process, what are we studying? I will really offer you all the parapet. Why do you all want to stand there? It's not a punishment. It's just a means of giving you away more initially. And you. Also falling asleep. You think I was blind? Are you okay or not? Huh? How are you going to write? Do what you want. Uh. <laughs> okay, now. So, explain the difference between this reaction and the first reaction above. So what's the key difference here? What's the key difference here? No gas, carbon dioxide gas. Okay, so the first difference is in this reaction, no carbon dioxide gas 
is formed as a product. Okay. So why cannot use the method above to detect the mass of the decrease in the mass? Yeah, because throughout the whole reaction there will be throughout the reaction. The reaction scheme is given to you, right? Yes. The products are given to you. There's no gas being produced in this reaction. Sorry? I will have a it. You didn't indicate something outside. It's fine. Yeah. Okay. There is no gas formed as a product. Okay, so the carbon outside here may be. I'll just bracket it. May not an essential part of the answer. Thank <laughs> you. 